The problem with Rust, uh, among uh, other things, is that it's multiplayer only. So if you want to jump into a world and test stuff by yourself like you would in Minecraft, you can just jump into a single player world and test out your 3x3 piston door, whatever. In Rust you can't do that so easily. You can use like other servers like uh, sandbox servers, but then you've got a load of people raiding and there's explosions and it's loud and you're not allowed in certain places. It gets wiped after a week. So what I like to do is I like to make my own server so I can test stuff in uh, by myself. So every Rust tutorial I make is uh, on my own server. So where I'm an, I'm an admin and I can control all the mods that I want in there and I can spawn anything I want. I'm going to show you how to create your own server. It's actually very, very simple. So I'm going to try and be as quick as I can. Uh, not rush through it, but I'm not going to try and dwell on anything. Uh, there's a few sort of stages. We've got setup and then adding moderators, port forwarding, archon and modding. And I'm going to leave timestamps in the description for all of those. So if you need to refer back to it, just click on those. So to start, you want to install Notepad++. It's not necessary. It just makes it a little nicer to work with when we come to something later. Second, what you want to do is download Steam CMD. So go to this website. Again, link in the description and click download Steam CMD. Follow these steps to install it. Obviously we're using Windows, it's a Windows only tutorial. So we're just gonna create a folder for it. So I've already got one here, I've already got it installed just to make things a little easier. So just call it Steam CMD. Uh, it doesn't really matter where it is. Just remember what that folder's called. And then download this zip. And open it up and just drag and uh, sorry if you just go into this folder just drag and drop steamcmd.exe into where you want to install it like here and then activate it it's going to install all these files and then once you're done with that close it out just to clear the cache and then relaunch steamcmd.exe by the way if you don't have .exe after everything or .dll go up to on the top here go to view and then file name extensions Make sure that is clicked. You see there. So once you're in Steam CMD, you want to type login anonymous. This is just going to connect us to Steam without having to use our username and password, which you can do. It's just a little bit irrelevant since you can do it anywhere. And then we're going to type, oh, sorry. First, what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder for our Rust server. So mine is here, Rust server. I've got everything installed in here. So I've made a new folder just to demonstrate. So mine is uh, a backslash Rust server 2. So we type that into Steam CMD. So we want to go force underscore install dir, which is directory, and then the space, and then your speech marks, and then whatever your drive is. So like that. So that's going to be in a paste bin. I will leave in the description if you just need to copy that out. Now we hit enter, and that's just going to change the directory that's going to install into there. So now we need to type app update, which is going to install it for us. 258550. So that's the unique code for uh, the Rust server. So obviously I've already got mine installed, so I'm fine. Uh, once yours is done, it'll say successfully installed, just type quit and it will close out the program. I'm just gonna close it here because I don't actually need it. Once everything's installed, what we're gonna do now is create a new text file. So we're gonna call it something easy to see what it is. So I'm gonna call mine startup. And this is gonna be the text file you use. Well, this is gonna be the file you use to launch the server. So this is gonna contain all of your startup parameters. So I'm just gonna open this with Notepad++ and you'll see it's a lot nicer than using um, WordPad. So I'm going to head over to this paste bin here and I'll leave a link in the description and I'm just going to copy this. This is probably the easiest way to do it. There's no point trying to write it out yourself. It's just a bit pointless, especially if you're not a coder. I'm not a coder. I, I kind of know what all this means, but yeah, I don't really. There is full documentation of what all of these things mean if you want to really configure it. I'll leave this in the description, Rust dedicated server, and you can see all these parameters here. So you see we've got server IP, server port, archon IP, archon port, stuff like that. Now what you want to do is 
you want to rename this file, startup.txt, you want to replace txt with .bat. And remember to turn on your file name extensions to see that. Now we're just going to run startup.bat. And you'll see here it is updating the app for us. You can see it's already updated, so it's going to skip. And now it's going to set up the server for the first time. You're going to get a few errors. After you've set up the server for the first time, close it, run it again. Everything should be working, and then we can start to join. Okay, once your server's up, you will see this. A good indicator is that you'll see this sort of status bar in the bottom corner. So I'm just going to close the server, and I'm going to relaunch it, make sure that all the errors are ironed out. You'll notice that on the first startup, there'll be a couple errors in there, and the startup will hang on them for a bit. Just leave them be. They're fine. Uh, it happens. It happens. Sorry, I just had a mental voice crack. Once the server's up again, we're going to head into Rust, and we're going to hit F1 to open the console, and then we're going to type client dot connect localhost colon and then the IP uh, the port sorry that you remembered earlier from your setup file not the archon one the server port one so that's two eight zero one five hit enter and you'll get this screen if you don't and it says something like Amsterdam two then you've done something wrong so double check the servers up double check you've typed it correctly uh, try again or restart the server even. Okay, so here we are in game, and it looks like a dog. Uh, that is because when you launch the server by default, when you launch the dedicated server stuff uh, by default, it sets everything to low graphics settings. So every time you go in the game after launching the server, you're going to want to up the graphics quality a bit. And uh, I actually just crashed the game by changing my graphics settings, so that's cool. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add some moderators. So a mo uh, there's two types of moderator. There's an owner and a moderator. The owner can do everything and cannot be kicked by moderators. I'm pretty sure you might have to look that up. Not really sure. I just add myself as an owner because, and then other people as a moderator because I don't really let many people on my server, maybe one or two who will help me build something. So to add an owner, which you probably want to be yourself, you want to type owner ID, and then there's Steam64. So my Steam64 is here. But if you want to find yours or your friends, you can just head to steamid.io and put in any type of, you can even log in through Steam, you put in any type of identification. So I'll just put in my vanity name, and you can see mine is there also. You can also put in the Steam profile link, uh, like this one here, but you'll notice that the Steam profile link is sometimes the Steam64 if you haven't got a custom URL like I do. So I'm going to copy my Steam64 ID, and then we're going to type owner ID. Uh, is that no? Nope. Paste that in there, and then give them a name. So I'll call it Combat. There we go. Added an owner. To add a moderator, um, how do you spell moderator? Oh yeah. Moderator, that's not how you spell it. Moderator ID, Steam64, then a name. Like that. If you want to remove a moderator, remove mod, uh, remove moderator, and then the Steam64 ID. If you want to remove an owner, you guessed it, remove owner, Steam64. Okay, I'm not. I'm not an owner because I became a moderator, but yeah, you get the idea. So now we want to port forward to let other people join the game. So those ports you listed down earlier, uh, this is where we're going to use them. So this basically allows other players to access your IP address through that port and you're going to open up the port as if it's a gate. That's probably the best way I can explain it. If you don't know how to do that, you want to go to portforward.com and then you'll see down here we've got port forwarding guides. So just click on here. I'll leave this as a link in the description. Find your router. So mine is a BT. And it's like, uh, close the, ad, the uh, advert. I think mine's like a smart hub, something like that. And it'll tell you how to, yeah, here it is. It'll tell you how to port forward. So once you've figured that out, 
once you're in the place, you want to do something similar. Every router is different, but I'm going to give you a basic idea of what's going to happen. So I'm going to go advanced settings, then firewall, and then I believe I have a password saved here. Yeah. And once we're in firewall, you can see you've got a load of ports here. These are all mine that I've created. And down here, we've got Rust and Archon port. So for the Rust port, I've got it hosted on my my uh, PC, which is N52NRR. Um, so 28015, 28015, 28015, and then choose this protocol. Just make everything these numbers. And then 28016, this is our Archon port, remember. So this will allow us to remotely control the server from even your phone. So unfortunately there's not much help I can offer on this part, you're just going to have to try and figure it out yourself. So once you've done that, you want to get your IPv4 address. So go to whatismyip.com, I've left a link in the description, there's also a ton of other sites, I just use this one because it's easy to type. So you want to copy down your public IPv4 address, like this, and then you give it to your friends, and they basically replace local, like when we connected earlier, replace local host with that IP address and put the port after it and then they can join. They can also search through the server browser. You'll notice we changed the name earlier so they can just search that name. So mine would be combat, it would probably show up like combat tags, but it'll also show up that server and then they can join from there. So now we're gonna get into Archon. Archon is remote, com uh, remote connection. So we're basically gonna be able to control our server through a nicer looking UI like this, you'll see here. So my favorite is Rust Admin, a link in the description. Download it and install it, and then we're gonna open it up. Oh, here we go, it's Rust Admin release. And we'll open up Rust Admin. So once we're in Rust Admin, you wanna to head to Configuration, and you wanna put your IP address in here. So we got it from what is my IP address. Put it in there, so there's mine there, I've blurred it out obviously. And the password is the one we set in the startup file, which for me was, oh, well, so my password was make it secure. Once that's all filled in, just make sure it's set to web archon. This doesn't really matter. And then we just wanna hit save. It's gonna make a really loud confirmation noise. Hit okay. And we can go to the console. And up here, there's a little button. If you just click on there, server connect. This will go green down here. And you'll see the name of our server is correct as well. It's called test. And now our Archon is connected to the server. So we can type in chat here and it'll say that the server sent it like, hello. We can also execute commands in here. So um, spawn minicopter. And will that show up in there? It, it does not show up in the actual console itself. But this is how you control your server you can control it from your phone also. If this is all you're after and you're not after a modded server, then feel free to leave the video here. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like, comment if I forgot anything. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to help. Just leave a comment. Can't remember everything, so I might forget things, you know. But if you want to mod your server, then keep watching, and we will do that. So to mod your server, you just want to close the server down because we're going to be installing some new files. Once you've done that, head over to umod.org slash game slash rust and download the latest version for Windows, which will always be the top one. The Linux one, it will stay Linux here. Download this and it'll download a zip file which will contain a folder. So we just open that in whatever you've got. I'm using WinRAR, obviously, and we can open this behind it, our Rust server root directory and we'll just drag Rust dedicated data into there and it's gonna replace this one that's already here. So replace the files in the destination and there. So now we wanna start up the server and it's gonna detect the oxide is in there and it's gonna install a bunch of new things for us. Okay, so once that's done, it's gonna completely reset your server. So make sure there's nothing in there. You might wanna copy it over if you wanna use it with the modded if you haven't done anything already. Once the mods are activated, we can start adding them. So we can head to umod.org slash plugins slash search and we can get 
some stuff. So I'm going to go uh, B grid. B grid is a mod that lets you build instantly in stone, say. So it's a lot, lot better than having to build everything in twig and then up, upgrade it a couple times. So we just go onto this web page and hit download. You'll see it'll just download this tiny little file. So we'll navigate to our root and we want to go oxide plugins and then just drag it into there. So once that's done, we head on our server. It's going to find it and it's going to load it. So we can also uh, oxide.reload all of them. If you need to do that, just put a wildcard in there and it'll reload all the mods if some of them aren't working. So once that's been there, it's going to create itself a config file. So then we can open up the config file and do some editing. So while the server itself will update every time you run it using the code we created in here, every time you run it, it's going to update the server for you. The mods itself will not update every month and there is a new patch released every month that will only work with the newest version of Rust. So what you want to do is go back to that same website, download the newer version, and then you just drag it like we did before just drag it into here so it'll replace rust dedicated underscore data hit replace files everything will be updated all the mods are backwards compatible they do not need manual updating and there you go so have fun with your new server or you could just buy one thanks for watching